Hey there, I am JB and for today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make some basic blueprints in the editor and upload these to the island blueprint shop so you can start making some coins or join in some competition that are being held on the official island discord and win great prices. A link of the official discord is in the description. Also keep in mind this video is focused on people that are new with the editor. So let's first go to the editor, which you can find right up here. Then let's create a new game, give it a name, and then click on finish. And once we're in here, you see a lot of stuff, but don't worry, we're only going to do what is needed for today's episode. Slowly but surely, you will start learning all of the other great stuff. Now the first thing that you can see right down here is a spawn point. At this spawn point can be handy when you need to test a certain couple of things to see if your blueprint is correct, if it works. Think about for an example the chairs. If you place a chair too close to a table or a wall or anything, then it could be possible that the chair is not reachable, which in this case you can test it by just clicking on test. And then we are in our big empty world. Now to get out of here, just press escape, then leave game and click on return to the editor. Now it might be possible that sometimes you don't want to go all the way and test this and load up the map you just want to see if a entrance for an example is passable if that is english but you can also just press o and when you press o you can just spawn in your character press double space bar to drop it and then you can walk and see and test what is needed Holy enough you cannot test any chairs any doors and that kind of stuff maybe in the future to get out of this mode just simply press escape in this case you want to keep this spawn point here but what if you delete it by accident well up here it says game logic when you click on here and you simply type in spawn you get another spawn point you click on it and you can place it down now let's start creating a nice blueprint in order to place down some bits and pieces, we're going to need to go right up here to this square with a plus. Once you click on here, you get a whole list. And the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we are only using pieces that are usable for adventure mode. There are also pieces that are usable, for example, for a game, what you can make. But in this case, we want to turn those non-necessary pieces off. So we're going to click right down here. And then we're going to select allow in-game blueprint. Once you do this, you don't have to worry that you take something that we cannot use in adventure mode. Now, the way how you navigate is just by using WASD to move forward, backwards and all that good stuff. You can use your scroll wheel, of course, to zoom in and out. And once you hold your scroll wheel, you can go like this. And if you hold your right mouse button, you can move around. Now, sometimes, you know, it might show a little glitchy the other way around but this is basically so you can just turn like that and of course we have z and q to go up and down now in this case we're going to go to blocks and we're going to go to wooden blocks and we're going to choose this guy right down here and the first thing you might notice that it's choppy or in other words it's on grid now how you see if it's on grid or free place mode which is you know, the same thing in the single player well i'm just placing this down press escape because up here you can see it gray out if you press on v which is the same in adventure mode you can see it now light up which if i select now one of these you can see that i can freely place this anywhere we want this is a very important thing once you save your blueprint that it's always on grid. I'm going to show you a small little trick what you could do to make sure it's on grid so it doesn't like spawn half into the floor or doesn't connect up to other buildings or whatever. Of course this is up to you if it's neat or not neat that it must be on grid of course. Right, so in this case, I'm just going to press escape, get rid of everything and also with this block I'm going to press on delete and it's gone. Let's do that again. Click on this cube, blocks, scroll down, wooden blocks, and in this case, this guy. 
Now I want to make like what they call I believe a patio or something like that I'm going to put it on grid mode so I'm going to press V so it's grayed out on the top I'm going to place this guy here and this guy there and I'm going to do that a couple of times like that I need more but I need to show you some hotkeys right then I'm going to select this guy to make things look a little bit different I'm going to do that here there and there now I want to make this into a perfect square I could have just placed down three blocks select them all and then you know copy them over which we're going to do right now I'm going to take the uh, top view and in this case just quickly remove these guys because it's handier to select this then in order to duplicate this you're going to press ctrl D now how do we move it over well there is a space bar if you press space bar once you get the option to move stuff you can place it right down here if i would press space bar again we're going to get the rotation so now we can rotate stuff if i would press it again it will just disappear so you can just you know look freely to your work without having the navigation tools in the screen uh, anyways i'm going to press space bar for the move then we're going to press Ctrl D again and then just move it right down here. And now I got a perfect square. The next thing I want to do is make like a nice outline around here. So I'm going to get this long guy. I'm going to place it here. Now, can we rotate things without having to first place it down? Yes, we can. It just works the same as in single player. What we can do is press F. To rotate we can press G to rotate and we can press H to rotate now in this case I'm gonna take a fresh one I'm gonna press F and place this here there and there so now we got like a nice outline and there is some space for a pole so I'm going to press G you will you know sometimes play around with it I have the same thing in single player like I'm pressing the wrong buttons and whatnot you can get used to this and place it like that all right so now we start to get something down here now in order to make things look a little bit more interesting we can actually add a couple of stairways to the side to give it a little more detail in this case there is a way for example if you only want to select these guys but you don't want to select these guys for an example if you hold control and click twice on these blocks you can select all of the same blocks let's try that again on these blocks but you see that the other blocks will be deselected this can be sometimes handy in this case i'm just gonna hold control because i want to select multiply blocks and click on this one while I'm still holding control and this way you can select multiply things without letting go of the other ones I'm just simply gonna move this up once just like that as the stairway is going to be very simple I want to select these these and these I'm gonna press ctrl D to duplicate them place them like that and then place them down I'm going to rotate to this side place them down and in this case you know i'm gonna have it on the other side fastest way to do this is of course hold control select the other pieces then ctrl d and press spacebar because you want to rotate this guy press spacebar twice and you can move it inwards and now it already starts to look a little bit more detailed than having this flat onto the ground now another thing that i would like to have is something onto the top I'm gonna hold control, select all of these guys, duplicate them, and I'm gonna move them up. I'm not gonna move them all the way up, but just one below. So this gives a little bit more detail. Alright, so in this case, I would also like to have a couple ones on top. So I'm going to select this guy, and then control D, control D. I'm gonna select both of these, control D and ctrl d and then there is a little bit of a problem there is a bit of a gap now in this case we're going to need to use a free place mode so i'm going to select all of these guys and what i'm going to do this is a little trick that i discovered not long ago while it's still in grid mode i'm just going to 
all down onto this arrow. I'm not going to move it. And while you're holding down on the arrow, you can see like a little plus, uh, which if I press V2, it will stay there, which is very nice. That's a little trick because now I can look at one of the points of my work and just move it this way and kind of see if it's in the middle of those you know, two pluses, which I'm looking right down there. I'm just zooming in with my editor program. You can now see if I pass the line somewhere that it's in the middle, sort of. So now I can just let go, and now I should have even space on both sides, which is very nice. Of course, don't forget to save your work. This is very important. Now you can do this on two ways. You can go to the menu and just click on save, or you can learn yourself to hold control and then press S, because on this way, you save it quicker than going all the way there. You should actually do this quite often. This is real quick. This is something that I've learned while I was learning a 3D program. You want to press it as much as possible. You can always go back. It's not like a game you're playing that you can undo certain things. So don't be afraid to press uh, Ctrl S to save your work. In case it crashes. All right. So in this case, I would like to add some lights. Now the lights could be or either this side, that side, on the inside. I don't want that. I want it to be exactly onto the corner. So the light will evenly shed out. Now in this case, we need to make use of rotation. But I've also learned myself something handy. And also, since we want to copy it four times, or at least three times when we make it, just gonna delete these guys because why would I, you know, make it four times if I can make it one time and then just simply copy it all over the place? So, in this case, we're only going to keep this guy, we're gonna add as much stuff as possible, then we're gonna select everything and then just copy and rotate it four times. Now, what we could do is we're going to, need to have something in order to hang up the lantern. In this case, I know what I want, and this is something you learn over time. I'm going to need to watch my video back what I did wrong here. Probably I typed it the wrong way. Anyways, I want to use this guy right down here. I'm going to press V for grid mode, and I'm going to place it like that. Zoom in for a bit. Now I'm going to press spacebar, and I'm going to move it like that. Now, what I would like to have is this guy is sticking out of the pole and somewhere around here, I want to have it into the pole. Now we can do this the hard way and, you know, try to rotate, but it's not going to work like that in grid mode. What we need to do is in free place mode by pressing V. Once you do that, it's, you know, we don't have much control over a perfectly 45 degree angle. What we can do here, I'm just going to press Ctrl Z to undo my last action. We need to, first of all, take care that this is selected. This, you know, um, make sure that the free rotation is turned off. And now it basically acts like grid mode. But we want to have something between in. I'm going to click on these three dots. Because these three dots will give you all kinds of options. And as you see, it's 90 degrees. We want to have it on 45. I'm going to select that. And now it is perfectly between in. Now, what we're going to do now is we need to take care that this guy is going to get to the pole. So I'm going to put it back to grid mode. And then take care that we got the movement mode. And then if we move it like that, you can see it starts to get into the pole. I'm going to move one up. We have a better view, but I would like to play around a little bit more. I want to have it stick out more. Now you can see that the orientation of the movement is grid. In order to, you know, we want to move it out that way without messing around with these two guys too much. So what I mean by that is we're going to press on V for free place mode. And now you can see that we can move it like this, which is super duper handy. And I wanna have it something like this, that is very nice. And in this case, I'm just gonna zoom out and we're just gonna place it somewhere around there. And what I'm also going to do is, we're gonna save this position because maybe it's going to be very handy for the lantern. So we don't have to, you know, 
re-rotate, remove everything too much. So I'm going to deselect in this case and uh, so I have a better view. And then with the right mouse button, you can actually, you know, add or save the position, which can be done at transform. So we're going to store the position and we're going to store the rotation. Because now if we type in lantern, and we choose this guy for an example just place it down doesn't matter where if we're going to go to transform again we can do now set stored rotation it will lay down and we can also do set stored position the only thing that we now have to do is rotate it back but at least the angle with the object that we already have here is perfect so in this case, we're going to do the rotation, but keep in mind we change it to 45 degrees. Just going to put it to 90. So now we just have to do this, this, and then do it to movement mode. And now we can move it where we want it without having to do this on the ground too much. And we can just take a look where we want it somewhere around here. We don't want to have it. Too close up to the pole, but a little bit somewhere around here. And then we have our first object diagonal onto the pole. Now, one thing I do want to test, and in this case, it's handy to press O. I want to see how high or how low it is, because it would eventually be very realistic if we can actually reach it in order to turn the lights on or off. Unless, of course, it is um, electrical powered, so we can just, you know, do this by holding console and select both of these and just move it somewhere around here. Press O again. You know what? I think this is actually kind of fine. I don't want to have it too low. And of course, we can just place down a little stash or a box, a crate or whatever to stand on it. We also want to take care that we don't bash our head to it. Stuff like that. So this is the first thing on our poll. Gonna press escape. Now before moving on, I would like to add two more things. One is a planter at the corner and I would like to add a little bit of decoration onto the top. I'm gonna go to this cube and in this case, I know what I want. I'm gonna type in bullet, I'm going to select the bullet and I'm going to press V for grid mode and press F a couple of times. So it's just perfect like that. In this case, I'm going to hold this guy and press V for free place mode. And then I can kind of aim out in the middle of those two pluses. Press V for grid mode. Hold it. Press V again. So we can kind of aim it out. You don't have to always do everything too precisely. I'm going to do V again for grid mode because I want to rotate this guy around like that. And then V again to free place mode. Press spacebar a couple of times to get this movement thing. And then I want to place it something like this. This is like um, the cover onto a bolt or whatever. You just have to use your fantasy a little bit. Now, since we have placed this on free place mode, I don't want to redo the whole show again. I want to keep it simple. What I mean by that is I'm going to press V for grid. Then I'm going to hold control because I'm going to select this pole. Then I'm going to hold control and then press D to duplicate it. And I'm going to go to rotation mode with spacebar. And rotate it like this and place it in here so we already got it there and then select one of these poles and then press delete and there we go you have it in this case i'm gonna type in pot i believe it's called yes and and then i guess i want to have this guy we're going to press v for um uh, make sure that it's on grid i mean i'm gonna place it right down there and i'm going to move it right in here now of course this is glitchy it's not nice so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, press v for free place mode i'm just going to move it in a little bit so it doesn't glitch out also in here a little bit so it doesn't glitch out of course it is up to you to keep this or don't keep this so you can just lower it if you wish so it's not visible and there you have it we have like a planter at the corner and of course we need to have something in there in this case i'm going to press space bar right down here i want to check out plants and in my case i've been using i've been using grain so we're going to click on grain now there is one thing i also want to show you is that 
when you place a seed in adventure mode you only have chance on one of the models it will show so it could be possible that if you place a seed you only get this model and you will never get this model that's the fun thing of the editor that you have multiplied choices maybe that will change stuff into the future here for now i think i'm going to choose this one it also depends on if it looks good if it doesn't glitch out and stuff of course it will glitch out if it's very windy and we shouldn't take everything too serious i'm just gonna place it like this in the free place mode i'm going to take a look if it looks good or not just move it and you know if you get this don't forget to turn this guy off of course there are also a lot of hotkeys but i just want you to learn just a few basic hotkeys that will be that uh, in this case if you want to have the grid movement instead of the local movement or better to say you have world and local this is local and then this is world as you see like a globe so now you can move it onto grid i like a little bit you know grid stuff then i think it will be fine like that when i agree with this all right this is what i want to have for right now of course we want to also colorize stuff you can keep it as it is just very basic but if you just give it a little bit of color you can give it your own touch and before we're going to do that let's press ctrl s to save up our work now the way how to colorize things on a basic way is you see here the painting brush so we can just click on a painting brush then we have paint pick and revert revert is to i believe is restored to its original color now we want to paint this nice and brown now what you can do you probably when you're new don't see all of these colors down here that's because i saved some of these colors but i cannot add anything more but you should see a plus somewhere so what i'm going to do i'm going to select this color here to see and do this together with you guys I want to remove this guy so i'm going to click on this one remove it so now you can see there is a plus Just be aware you need to do this right down here click on plus and now you added the color so this way you can make your own color palette now if you're new you can just play around with this to make it darker or lighter stuff whiter or more colorful you can play around with this guy now this down here glow is only for when you make a game to say this doesn't work in the adventure mode you can try it but it doesn't work i'm not sure if it will give an error if you try it um but in this case i'm just going to choose one of the very darker color here and then i'm going to click on confirm and now i can just you know start painting around i want to have all of the pieces of wood like that now be aware that some objects which i'm probably going to show you with the planter have multiply color slots so we'll do this um also the paint brush is very big so that's why you also see this one changes color but the thing i want to explain here is that the reason why it's green because multiply color slot uh, what you can also do is just click on the planter and then just you know change this for whatever color you would like if i click on the planter there we go change it for any color you like Okay, so I want to have it like a nice light brown, I think. Maybe a darker one would be better. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, so in this case, I want this color to be original. So what I am going to do, since this stop is very big, I'm going to click on the vault, confirm, the vault, confirm. So now I have the original color back. Also, we have the bullets down here. I'm going to select both of these by holding control. And then I'm going to, you know, give this like a nice dark gray color and just see how it looks like. That is fine. And also with these guys, I'm going to hold it. Now, I hope that if I would do this, okay, both colors, because like I said, some have double slots and it will show or not show at a double slot or an X. You just have to play around with this a little bit right so now we have one corner done so what we can do here is i want to select all of the good stuff but i'm thinking of it 
There is one more thing that I also would like to do. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to do Shift D and I also want to have it right down here. In this case, I'm going to eyeball this out for a bit. You can use like grid mode and then press V again if you like to. This is fine by me. I like it. All right, so we're going to select everything and then put it up to all the corners. So in this case, the thing that I got the most right down here are these bullets. So I'm going to hold control, double click on one bullet. So I got all four of them. This time I'm just going to click, 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 click and click. Now we want to work on grid. So we should actually not take this plant. But we should take this pole so i'm just gonna reselect it so now it's focused on the pole i'm gonna press space bar so press space bar again until i got this movement then i'm just going to press v get it onto grid mode and we're gonna rotate this guy this way space bar a couple of times just you know do this all over the place a good start i would say now of course you want to have a place to sit so i'm going to click on here and i would like to have a table i have a wooden table i want to have this guy right down here and i'm just going to place it down and see afterwards if it's in the middle or not seems like i'm lucky now in this case i want to also have it wood but i'm not going to click the darkest one i'm going to click the little bit lighter and i want to have this metal stuff not the darkest one but a little lighter like that then we want to have some chairs click on this one and i actually like this throne chair i'm gonna place a four of these on each side now in this case i have already tested it but i'm going to show you that you know when you press o in this case you want to test the chairs you cannot sit on it it doesn't work like that in this case we're going to need to test it and now that we are in here and just click on it and see that you're sitting nice onto the table like that very good and then we can go back again now of course you can add all kinds of stuff that you like in this case i'm going to add one more thing i want to have like a candle onto the table but i just don't want to have the candle you know randomly on the table i want to have it into something and also so that the candle wax doesn't drip onto the table and i already figured out a, a food and I would like to have a coconut and I would like to have this guy and in this case it doesn't want to pop onto the table now there is a trick I believe if I click on this guy and then put the object snapping on yeah it should you know snap onto the table so I'm gonna place it right down here and press V for free place mode and I'll just Trying to put it a little bit into the table so it's not like too obvious that it's a, a cocoa nut just like that um i cannot remember the color i've chosen <laughs> all right i'll just watch it back my video it's just something like a bit darkish green now in this case i want to have the same color onto the second one so what i can do here is just click in here then press ctrl c and in here, Ctrl V, this is just very basic on a PC, you can press enter, and now it also has the same color, press on confirm, and there we have it. Go to the candle, and there we have it, a candle. Now in this case, I'm going to make the candle a little bit modern, so I'm going to make it a little bit white, not too white, just a little bit, and I want to make the, whatever that is called, I'm going to make it a bit black like that and i'm just going to place it in here till i'm like happy and there you have it beautiful just perfect as i had it before now of course you can do a lot more with this stuff add a lot more details yeah, you can add a roof on it you can also take these little bolt covers and just place it here because you know they're also bolted in here but i'm just going to keep it a simple and for now i'm just going to show you that we also going to need to turn off pickables now there are two ways of doing this so you won't you know pick stuff up by accident if you don't want to have that most people prefer to have it turned off now the basic way of doing this is you know you select an object and then you 
you select this guy and now you cannot pick it up anymore of course you can demolish it now it's not going to be very nice to do this one by one and of course because this is a small project you can just you know say okay let's hold control select all of these guys then turn this off and then if i'm not wrong yeah it's turned off at each of the guys which is very nice you can do that at the bullets and then turn it off and this guy turn it off i'm not really sure if you have two different objects if it will work we can actually test that right here right now we can just turn both on it's on and it's on okay so it does work for multiply objects that are different from each other i didn't know that so in this case we have unselected all of the pickables for our object now imagine you have like a gigantic type of blueprint with hundreds maybe with thousands pickable stuff in this case we're going to need to use a homemade tool and you can find more information in my discord how to install this and i'm just going to show you once you place it in the correct folder i'm going to click on here and then if you select everything then you see here this is the tool set it as non-pickable then you click once on it and then it says done and everything is set to non-pickable which is super handy all right so in this case that is that and now we're going to save it into a blueprint there are a few couple of important things so first of all uh, i've been saying you want to have things on grid or you want to have things not on grid so let me just show you for an example what i mean uh, if you would like to place uh, some plants around which you don't have the model when you place down the seed because there are multiply models in this case i'm just going to take the grain one and say okay this is not the model you're going to get so what if you would like to place this model in adventure mode now you have like grid you have non-grid the thing that you can do to keep it on grid while it's not on grid maybe it makes not a lot of sense is you just place something and then what you can do and this is also a little bit of an indicator for someone who get your blueprint and doesn't know like the height of it because sometimes you have a building and let's say for example you have used a higher pole but the pole is needs to be this far into the ground not everyone knows that so what you can do is just you know you have an object in this case doesn't make too much sense for this but i have been doing it you can just place a block onto grid so make sure the grid is turned on place it like that and then just save it while this guy is being selected then it's always on grid and then people know like okay this is ground level in case you have something with a pole that is into the ground i hope it makes a bit of sense so in order to save this up we're going to select everything and i'm going to choose this piece of stairway since it's on to grid and i know it's on the floor then you're going to click save as blueprint now this is to create a blueprint which is mostly used for mini games and that kind of stuff we want to have a game blueprint because we want to make sure that this is usable in adventure mode um this guy i believe is also being used to select what you want to have as origin so now we can just click on next the object was saved in game blueprint as destructible yada 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 in this case the one very important thing that i want you to learn is make a new picture because you might have seen in the blueprint shop pictures of objects that were like token from space or whatever uh, you want to have it nice and clear into the screen now what i recommend is to, if you see space here just go into free camera and uh, you have z and z is very sensitive if you hold control and press z or q you know it's gonna go a lot more smoother and uh, what i recommend and you can also use scroll if you let go no no scroll oh yeah it's uh, w uh, i'm getting confused so what you want to do is uh, zoom out and then try to match the bottom with the bottom and the top with the top i believe it's fine like this maybe a tiny touch more up tiny tiny touch a little bit very sensitive i think this is fine now what is okay with this is to have it a little bit outside of your window uh, then it's like nice and big into the total picture it doesn't show like all the space you have but this is fine like this it's nice visible so i'm going to save it this is going to be the picture 
better this case i'm gonna give it a name i'm gonna call this gazebo right like that you can add the description and the next thing we're going to do is we want to save this up to the blueprint shop that is this button for and this one is just if you want to you know save it for your own but don't want it in the blueprint shop this is the override so if we make a mistake then we go to the editor change the mistake then we're going to redo it into blueprint what we actually did before and then you get on this page then you're going to press an override because then you can overwrite the one in the blueprint shop or uh, when you just normally save and closed it okay, so in this case we're going to click on save and upload then we get on to the next page here you can price it if it the price that it gives you you can never go lower than that you can you know always go higher i mean you can add like a couple of zeros don't do that because no one will buy it and you have a highly chance the developer will um delete it from the store i mean if you want it to be 1000 that's fine 10,000 is like yeah don't do that nobody buys it and any zero after this might result into a delete <laughs> in this case i'm just gonna keep it on 100 i'm gonna edit the tax now with the tax to be fair don't give it tax that it's not um so don't call it alien because nothing to do with alien um if people report that you use the wrong tax once again you can get it uh, banned out of the store in this case it is a building in this case it is also a decoration and it is a modern type of deal I'm going to apply it with that and then we can just simply click on upload to a workshop and then it tells me a set with the same name already exists now to be real honest i wasn't expecting that this would happen garden gazebo now what i really wanted to do you know is just call it df and then use this but for some reason they don't care that you cannot use this anymore no symbols so i'm just gonna call it bf gazebo and then upload it it should be fine there we have it it's uploaded to the workshop now before we go out Control s to save it you know once we are on the main menu we can go to the shop go to the blueprints blueprint browser and then we can go to my uploads change this guy to new and there you have it it's now into the blueprint shop so don't hesitate go buy it <laughs> now that will be that i really appreciate it if you would share this video with some more new players if you would subscribe if you like if you comment if you send me your credit card number all of that good stuff and of course you can let me know what else you would like me to see do into a video for you Okay, that last one, I don't even understand myself. Anyways, let's see if there is something new into the shop. People make amazing stuff these days. And yeah, let's take a look. Let me put it onto new. Wow, look at this. That is just amazing. Wow. Get the sky metal.